I am a little sick. Yeah. It sucks. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm taking one more bite of oatmeal. Ah, uh, oatmeal's good. Oatmeal's fine. It's not great. It's not the breakfast I want, but it's the breakfast I have to eat. You know, you can eat savory oatmeal, too. What's that? You know, instead of it being sweet, you can add savory stuff to it. Like what? Uh, one thing I like to do is um, kielbasa and broccoli, stir-fried. Uh, no, let's just stop right now. That's the worst thing I've ever <laughs> heard in my life. What? Try it, dude. It's good. I'm not putting broccoli in my oatmeal. It's good, man. No. No. There's certain things that are sacred, man. Ugh. Dude. Kibasa? No, man. No. No. Stir fried with some soy sauce? No. Maybe maybe some oyster sauce? No. No, man. No. No. Okay. Let's just let's just have this conversation. <laughs> Like people who use mayonnaise as a dipping sauce, that's just, that's just wrong. Too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mayonnaise are for sandwiches. That's it. That's okay. All you got. This is the worst. All right. Okay. Anyway, you know, I think your sickness is getting to your brain. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We're not here to talk about um, our uh, cholesterol issues. We're here to talk about Echo. We're a little behind, um, but I've only watched the first episode. I how many episodes have you watched? Well, I got six, so I, I watched them all. No, oh! but oh. I did re I did rewatch the first episode, so okay. it's fresh on my so, mind. So, man, I, I have you are you know everything. I don't know anything. Great. Well, this is yeah. new. Okay, well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna so spoil you don't have to ruin anything. But you can tell me, you know, hey, that might not happen or blah blah blah. Be, that's fine. I'm I'm okay, but I don't care if you spoil it for me. To be honest with you. Um, but um, I will. Well, say I don't want to spoil it for any of the listeners that are okay doing that's it. Doing true. It that's true. Doing it. That's true. Yeah. So we are doing one episode at a time. We promised the listeners that, and I'm I'm going to stick to it. Uh, unlike some people. Yeah. Um, well, you know things happen. Yeah. So you got sick and just stare at the TV the whole time. I mean, what are you going to do? Read. That's a good idea. <laughs> I haven't been sick to the point where I can't do anything but watch TV in a long time. Last time, I mean, I I do it because you you know it's good to fall asleep too. Yeah, I I don't, I don't, you know, I don't think I get a chance to. I don't know when I get sick. I don't think I get a chance to lay in bed. I don't think I do that. Really? I I I think I just walk around and just keep moving. That's not good. I know. I don't know why when I get sick I don't. You stay sick longer that way. Yeah, I know. I don't know why I don't do that. Like when I get sick, I should definitely just be sick. I I don't. I just. I I keep going. I keep doing stuff. Anyway. Anyway. All right, so I have some pretty strong thoughts for the first episode. I got some insights, but um, and I want to give some comic book stuff first. Talk about the comic book roots. Because when I was watching this, I kept forgetting how um, interesting it was when Echo was uh, appeared in the comics. I actually was reading comics at the time when Echo, Echo came out, and um, so the thing is, like, was this Darede- like nineties or something, or yeah, what? late nineties. Um, Daredevil the comic had a kind of a resurgence because of a lot of different things. One of them is Joe Casado, uh, who was a huge comic book influence at the time, uh, began doing the art for it. Uh, if you, if you want to just look up Joe Casado, Q U E S A D A. He does the, I think he does the, um, he's the, he's a director of the comics. So he's like the head, head editor in chief right now of it, of Marvel comics. I think, I think he's. Oh, okay. Yeah. Congrats. Um, sure. But he's he's responsible for a lot of good and bad things. So the good things he was responsible for is Daredevil researches. He loved Daredevil. He started doing the art for it. And um, at the time, a lot of Marvel comic characters uh, were struggling because of the mid nineties like dump when Image Artists left the Marvel um, comics. Like Todd McFarlane, right. Jim Lee, they all left. Uh, Rob Liefeld, they all left and made Image. 
And those are the heavyweight comic artists that people love to, to look at. And so when they left the comics, Spider-Man suffered, uh, X-Men suffered, Avengers suffered, and Daredevil suffered. Um, they tried to do some interesting things to make the Spider-Man and Avengers and Daredevil interesting. Uh, they try to image, imify them, which means they try to make them like image comics. So they saw what the young kids liked with the image, and they tried to transfer that to Marvel, and it just did not work. Lots of leather, uh, lots of like, lots of violence. Like Punisher was real popular back then. Wolverine was real popular mm. back then. Um, and it, just, it was it was just bad. But then Marvel <clears throat> started spending some money, I think, and and started getting some good comic artists to come back. And start doing more work. And one artist, uh, two artists, actually, Joe Casado, but yeah, a guy named David Mack. Uh, he's the guy who kind of invented uh, Echo's sort of look. It was interesting. Joe Casado would do half the comic, and then David Mack would do the other half. And the art was absolutely fantastic for David Mack. He was just beautiful. Um, but it was like, I could, it's hard to explain why his art annoyed me. It was just very like, sexually uh, uh, avert so it's like you know sexually forward lots of female characters doing like real sultry like looks into your eyes just stuff like that mm. and it wasn't really that interesting and they definitely were trying to get sales which i understand um but but um the character echo when she came out was interesting and i think the art was great but it was a whole lot of depth there um but the the show is de- it takes some things away from the comic do you remember that scene where the um her father was dying and he, he touched her face and left that mark of like a blood stain on her face? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the comic, her father did that, but the it was a face palm, so it was a whole like handprint, uh, of, and that was still like a kind of like a, a disguise kind of thing. It was like a trademark sort of thing. So she wore that. Yeah, like, she wore that when she was fighting people, and um. Uh, another thing that is, you, 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 there's certain things like you can look and see. Like there's this little thing where it's like there's a couple little uh, iconic. I, I forget how you, I don't know how you say it. iconographies. Iconography, I think. Uh, every once in a while, where she iconography? has iconography. Yeah, I can Yeah, there you go. Where it's like a, there's a circle with these little like pyramid shapes coming on the sides of it. There's a couple different things mm-hmm. you can see uh, in the in the show where it's like okay, this this is some of the David Mack influence, but not much. One thing that I thought when I reread some of the history of Echo, uh, I forgot is her and and Matt Murdock fell in love, but she didn't know that he was Daredevil. And wow. Kingpin blamed Daredevil for her father's death instead of like it was being blamed on Hawkeye slash Ronan, mm. which I thought was interesting. Uh, and um, and there's been this was never this was never proven, but um, Echo is a mutant. She's supposed to be. I don't think the show hmm. considers her a mutant, and I don't think the comics ever said, but she has the ability to memorize and understand movements. Like, she can see uh, someone fighting, and she can, like, learn their fight skills just from watching them one time, and then she can fight like them. That's the right. whole. That was the whole thing about her. The show doesn't amp that up much, but that's actually her quote-unquote superpower. Um, she doesn't have any other big superpowers in the comics. That you not know in the of? comics that I know of. Uh, she did die when she was resurrected, and she did get. She was. It, it, there was a whole thing where she was part of the Phoenix Force for a while. What's there was the a Phoenix comic Force? story. Uh, you know the Phoenix Force. I do not. Yes, you do. We talked about it for a very long time. Come on. Um, X Men, Dark Phoenix. Oh, oh, okay, okay. okay. There was a storyline where the Phoenix came back, and um, the power was given to Cyclops, Colossus, Namor, uh, and Echo, and a couple others. Uh, And so they had the ability of the Phoenix for a while. Um, And she she was one of the characters who had it. Uh, And uh, OP. Oh yeah, she's she's way OP. And also she um, she joined the Avengers for a while, so she was an Avenger for a little bit. Hmm. She also has some uh, run-ins with Moon Knight and some other, sp- other things. So she's been doing a whole bunch, man. She's been a- Does she have a costume in the comics? Her costume is kind of like just herself in a tight little outfit with some like Native American like um, bird feathers on. <laughs> it's not really that great. <laughs> but okay. she doesn't have like a mask or anything. She just has like a thing that she looks like. Right. Um, mm. 
But um, yeah, but so so she has a pretty interesting and I would say rather rich um history in the comic books. And but that's not really translating that much into the to the show, not nearly as much. Mm. Um so like what did you think of the first episode? Um I thought it was an interesting way to bring people up to speed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I didn't like it. Yeah, there's a lot of there's. I wonder how somebody that hasn't seen Hawkeye would like the first episode. You'd be conf- you'd be confused, man. You wouldn't know what's going on. Would you be? I think they put enough in there to explain things, but to to me, since I've seen Hawkeye, I'm like, okay, I've seen this already. I wonder if somebody that hasn't seen Hawkeye, if that would maybe flow better for them. Because to, to me and you, it takes us out of the 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 show a little bit because it's um calling back to another show but mm. for somebody who's seeing it for the first time maybe it works better let me ask you a question how much if i think blending it in with her historical flashbacks helps out yeah because basically the whole show is like almost nothing like half of it is nothing but flashbacks yeah how much does hawkeye's appearance in those flashbacks affect the trajectory of the narrative i mean the whole thing is Ronan killed her father. She's super angry. And then she like becomes a hitman for Kingpin. But on the flip side, the fact that uh, she learned that, that Kingpin was the one that wanted her father killed made her shoot Kingpin. Uh, I, I wish. I think, was, I think we need to know all of that. Cause I without wish all was, of that, the story makes no sense whatsoever. But, but there's different ways that we can give it out. So I think that sure. a bear, if she would have had a conversation, like when she goes to back to where was it, Colorado? Is it in Colorado? Um, hometown? Oklahoma, isn't it? Oklahoma, yeah. When she goes back to Oklahoma and she meets her cousins, she could have had like a conversation with the, especially with the cousin who's kind of mobbed up. They could have had a conversation where she I would have liked that actually. That would have been yeah. really nice. A conversation like whenever you're telling the story, you like, like she could have actually met up with her her old friend Bonnie. Mm-hmm. And yeah, but just kind of caught Bonnie up on everything. Which was Bonnie, her cousin? The 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 cousin that she calls a sister. Yeah, yeah but that but I haven't not seen the rest of the episode yet. But she's saving that. Like she doesn't want to see her yet. So I'm saying I'm saying instead of saving it, they could have Yeah, but you gotta save she something to look forward to later. I mean, I understand that. I don't, I, don't I mean I don't think there's a big payoff there, but um mm-hmm. I I think I think that would have been a nice way to do it. Talk talk like I don't think there's anybody else that's that close to her. Yeah. Other than Bonnie, where yeah. she would have uh, laid it all out. But we just need so yeah, we just need somebody for her to talk. But to. I would, I really would have enjoyed that actually to yeah, have like a. It would be a bad uh, way to do it. Like kind of like a callback to you know the way, um, in Hawkeye the way, what's her name, Elena Belova mm-hmm. talks to. Kate Bishop, just the way that conversation went down, you could have had a similar kind of conversation between, um, between uh, Maya Lopez and Bonnie in this. Yeah, it's it, it, there's so much detail that we need to know about what happened that our conversation will allow Echo to talk to us, the audience, and and the, the character, whoever it is, could have asked questions that we have, and she could have answered them. And this doesn't have to be a long conversation. And it would have been a nice bonding moment, right? But between them. I don't see Echo I don't see Echo bonding with anybody, but 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 you're right. It could be a moment where she kind of gives like she the the character in the show is very well defined. Like we know who Echo is, we know how she is. She's like well defined. Like that so I don't mind that. She's kind of a tough bird, but also she doesn't talk much, but also she's kind of stoic and angry and tired. So there's a lot going on. And I, I dig that, uh, but I will. I will have liked the extended conversation where she tells us about Ronan, about uh, Kingpin's betrayal, all of that stuff. And eventually, we'll have to have that conversation anyway. So it's kind of it's kind of annoying that they didn't have it. Yeah. Um, one thing there's a couple things that when I was watching, what do you think about the Choctaw origin flashback? I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I loved how weird it was. I loved how it was directed. I loved how mystical it felt. I love all of it. I loved everything about that. It was great. No problems with it whatsoever. Okay. Uh, I love, 
I'm a weird fan of. It was a weird start. Yeah, but I'm a weird, like, I'm a, what the heck is this? I thought we were watching Eka. Yeah, but I'm a fan of. I'm a fan of weird, um, like creation stories. Like I, I, I kind of feel like I need to spend some time reading more of them. There's an Aborigines creation story where um, uh, an old man walks the earth and sings the song of the earth, and that's why the earth exists. And as long as the song is sung, existence will still be uh, existing. But once the song stops, the world will end. And I always thought that's cool, man. And like, I just like I just like the idea of what our ancestors thought of what we came from and how they how they how they approached it. And, and I love it. I dig it. And uh, again. It felt very genuine. It felt real. It felt respectable. It felt it felt like they were using the subject matter right. I, th- I thought it was great. I thought, you know, I thought it was fun. I wish they would have done more stuff like that. Uh, you watched the entire series, so so um, did they do more stuff like that later? There are more flashbacks. Oh, awesome! So I'm excited about that. Um, and yeah, I thought it was creative, well directed. I think the whole show was very well directed. I think the the script's good. I think the direction's great. I think. Everything about the show feels weighty and heavy and dark. I have one gripe, but that's it. The rest of it, I'm really enjoying. I had a great time watching it. 100%. Is was, your one gripe the one we just talked about? or is it something No, else? it's a different one. I was, going to, I was going to wait, but I can talk about it now if you want. Um, the dare- um, I think the way that they did this was their cheap way of fixing what? the series. Cheap? Wait, 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 wait what? <clears throat> Instead of shooting scenes where... Um, Echo has a conversation with a friend. Mm. They could bring us up to speed. They said, let's just take scenes from yeah. Hawkeye. Splice them in, mesh them together with the other flashbacks. Bob's your uncle, we're done. Well, and, and so, so it might be cheap, but also when you're, when you're creating something, you get this feeling in your head that says, I have to do it this way. And if no one questions you, if you don't, if no one tries to get you to change, then you'll just do it that way. Uh, mm-hmm. And like a lot of times, like I tell my students, yeah, you, you should spend you fall some time. in love with your idea. Yeah, yeah, you fall in love with your idea, and you think that, and like, it's not always good. So like, I always try to look at it from a different angle, and no one looked at that from a different angle. Uh, and I, again, you might be right. I mean, I think they spent money on Hawkeye, and they probably assume that we watch Hawkeye, so they're like, well, this, you know, it's fine, but. I don't. I don't. I don't think. I think the Hawkeye stuff didn't really fit with um, Echo. I think. Well. I think this. I think this series got cut down from like eight episodes to five episodes. Maybe okay. Maybe. And I think maybe that's what happened in this first episode was part of that process. And if it's five episodes, couldn't it have been a movie? Right. Hello? I don't know if I would have gone to the theaters to see. No, it. no, I wouldn't say a theater, but it could be a movie just for Disney Plus. Right. Oh yeah. Well, especially the way they released it all at once. Mm-hmm. But whatever. You know, we don't make the money. Um, my one gripe, and this is a pretty big gripe actually, is the Daredevil fight scene. Like, what was that about? I've only watched the first episode, but that first fight scene, I thought I was super stoked when I saw him jump in. I was like, "Oh yes, he's here! Oh, it's already started!" Just like, yeah. But then the fight scene happened, and I thought it was fun. But it was obvious that Charlie Cox was not in that costume. <laughs> He's not in there. And then second, the fight just seemed real. I don't know how to put it. It, 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 it was as chaotic as promised and as chaotic as the dead of a fight scenes usually are. But I just kind of felt like it was short, right? It was short. Yeah, I, I liked it, though. I thought it was great. I would have liked I thought, to see it. I thought it was one of the best scenes that we've seen from Marvel in years. Yeah, that's true. I would have loved to see Maya. I think I just wanted more of it. I got, when I saw Devil Devil jump in, I was like, yes, this is what I want. And I was super excited about maybe having them fight for a long period of time. Um, so it's just, it's just like we've already talked about how the, the entire Defenders storyline from the Netflix, all those episodes, all, like Iron Fist, Punisher, all of them are now canon. So they're in the MCU. We got Maya and we got Daredevil jumping in. I got something to say about the timeline in a second. Um, but it's obvious that Marvel and Disney is like, listen, we not we have to rebuild this Disney Plus thing. And people love this Daredevil stuff. So, you know, let's, 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 let's do it like this. And, and I, I feel like it was working. I could have watched 
or Echo and Daredevil fight. And it might be nostalgia, like, cause I love, I mean, I started thinking, I'm gonna go back and watch the old Daredevil episodes. Like, you know, like, like, I'll, right. you know I'm gonna go back. Um, it could be nostalgia, but also it just, it's just fun. I mean, the, the music was cool. The fight, the fighting style was cool. I thought it was, it was pretty rad. But it also shows you how good she is. Yeah. That she was able to hold her own with Daredevil. Now, listen, this is going to possibly bother you, but I'm going to do this anyway. We got to talk about the timeline of when this appears in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay. So when, so, okay. Do you remember the final episodes of Daredevil season three? Not really. Uh, Daredevil season three. Do you remember that bullseye was wearing a Daredevil costume? I don't even remember the bullseye was in it. Oh my God. It's been, (laughs) how many years has it been? Mike, come on. Okay. I'll recap Daredevil season three. In Daredevil season three, um, Daredevil, uh, it's, it's, the, it's the ramifications of the Defenders episodes. He's hurt, uh, but he starts getting better. Someone takes over the Daredevil costume and is, it is Bullseye. Bullseye is hired by Kingpin, but it's a long story. Long, long story. Um, and now, now Bullseye is going around acting like he's Daredevil. So it kind of taints the Daredevil, you know, mythos. At the end of it, there's a big fight scene between Bullseye. Daredevil and Kingpin, the, the real Daredevil beats up Bullseye, and then the cops realize that the Daredevil that's been going around doing stuff is not Daredevil, you know, and so it's a whole thing. Okay, that's I vaguely the, remember that. Yeah, that's the end of season three. Now we get the blip when um, when Thanos snaps his fingers, correct, and half the population it disappears, correct? Yeah, I think I think Daredevil happens during the blip, right? Yeah. Not no, not Daredevil, not those episodes. Echo does that fight scene with Daredevil and Echo happens during the blip. Okay, and here's why: because Daredevil has his costume back on, and Kingpin is back on the throne as a mob boss. Because at the end of season three of Daredevil, he's arrested. So at, at so at the at when Echo is happening. Um, Kingpin is out of jail and he's back as a mob boss. So that all that stuff is happening when she wrecks the motorcycle shop, Ronin, all that stuff is happening during the blip. So that's kind of, I wish they kind of would have talked about that a little bit more so he knew what was happening because that's a big deal. Uh, but it's fine. It is what it is. Yeah, I, I do think there could have been a little, like, they could have just, like, put gears on the screen or something. Mm-hmm. Because this is not 2024. This is 2027 or 2028 when this is happening. When Echo is at, when we were seeing Echo like hurt in Oklahoma, this is 2028. Because mm. the blip hat was five years long. Okay. So, so the present day for MCU is actually five years ahead of us, which is confusing, but it is. What it is. Mm. Are you okay? Yeah. Are you sure? You sure? You get a little confused there? You're good? No, it's fine. Because right. I think it's important to know that, and so um, because like, for some, we don't, we never really got any kind of answers between Daredevil season three, and then the connection with She Hulk when Daredevil first appears again. We don't know what happens to Matt, so hopefully they'll answer that stuff later in Daredevil and Dead Born Again. Hopefully uh, they'll answer those questions. I'm, it makes me kind of feel like Daredevil Born Again is going to be a uh, a story about how Daredevil came back into prominence after Daredevil season three. I'm I'm curious. Did they, Daredevil Born Again it's a storyline where Daredevil uh is suffering and hurting to be he comes back to life. He he comes back as a strong superhero. It's a really long storyline and it's kind of dark and I don't know what they're gonna do in the show. I mean, I don't know. I'm just kind of curious about it. anyway. Yeah, a lot of the times they just grab those titles and yeah, don't really that's don't true. really take any inspiration from them. Yeah, it could be Daredevil Born Again. It's like, hey, Daredevil's back, everybody. Woohoo! You know, right. so that, that could be what it is. Um, but this is the direction that the that Disney Plus especially needs to go. The Echo style, what we're seeing here, that kind of stuff. Um, people are sick of all the superhero stuff, it's obvious. They're sick of Thanos doing stuff all the time, it's obvious. Uh, I'm not saying that superhero stuff is not going to be part of the of the stuff they're using, um, but good lord, the, uh, I haven't seen people's responses yet. But everybody, as far as critical response, people love the Echo stuff, and I think that that's going to be moving forward. 
Uh, and it's, I mean, I don't understand why they wouldn't do it. The, the, it costs less for them to make. All you got to do is have some good uh, cinematography, some good fight scenes, and a good story. I mean, you're good. You don't have to have a bunch of stupid special effects unless right. you're doing the stuff like they did at the beginning of the episode. Um, so, Mike, what did you think overall of, of Echo so far? And, and since you have watched the whole thing, I'm going to ask you a couple questions, but you don't have to answer. Uh, them. Okay. Um, I'm trying to get back in time to when I watched this first. I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot, actually. Um, probably the Daredevil fight helped out. Mm. Um, but I was excited for Echo. Um, excited to see it finally. Yeah, it's been I, two years, right? Yeah, yeah, it's been two years. So it took a while. Um, I wish it would came out sooner. To be honest with you, because uh, yeah. this is this is a pretty strong sequel to Hawkeye. So it would right. be nice if it would come out sooner. And like, when in Hawkeye, I didn't like the Echo character, but I really like her here. Uh, I didn't like. Well, I, I loved her. I, I loved her introduction in Hawkeye, and her fight scenes in Hawkeye were great. Yeah. Um, so I, that's why I was really excited for this series. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think that in retrospect, I'm probably going to go back and watch some of the Echo um, episodes from Hawkeye. This I was disappointed there was very little Kasi in the um, flashbacks in this episode. You see Kasi for like one second. Who's Kasi? That's her kind of romantic involvement in the. Um, um, tracksuit mafia. What? She had a romance. Her second, her second in command. Oh, he. They were. They didn't romance each other. Yeah, they did. Didn't she kill him? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't I, you it see, turned out he was partially. He, he was part of the plot to kill her father. Did they? Did they make out or kiss in Hawkeye? I don't remember. I think they were just good friends. No, there was something romantic there. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I didn't, I didn't even see him uh, at all. But anyway, no, he was in it for like one second. Yeah, I really liked him uh, from Hawkeye. So I well, was, he's he's dead. So he's not going to be in the Echo. Ever. Well, like yeah, but there were flashbacks. It would have been cool to like at least have him. Have, I guess if I guess if they gave him a line in a flashback, they'd have to pay him more money. So can I talk for a second and just talk about how good Kingpin is? Like what I. Oh my god! I have not ever seen. Please don't a comic book character cast in such a brilliant light as this. He's perfect as Kingpin. Perfect. There's no okay. one else that can play him. No one else. Does he wear like a wide suit or something? He might be a little bit girthy. Maybe. Oh, uh, what, so your- I know he's good at like drastically uh, gaining and losing weight for characters, but like. What's the who pay, who plays what's the, what's the actor's name? Vincent D'Onofrio, the guy what, that's really good at overacting. Why why don't you like him? He overacts. Isn't acting overacting anyway? No. It's like, acting just the right amount. It's like I'm a cook. I'm a overcook. Like, no, that's there's no such thing, dude. There's no one else who can play Kingpin like this. He's perfect as Kingpin. Absolutely okay. perfect. You don't think so? I don't know anything about Kingpin other than what I've seen played by Vincent D'Onofrio. Well, that's it. He plays him perfectly. That's, like he's that. This is perfect. Okay. Okay. This that over. It's that simmering minutes. Like you don't know what he's. So King Wilson Fisk, Fisk overacts in real life. I would say that every superhero character in the comic books are overacting. <laughs> I feel like that's just how it is. But no, it's okay. like. But like, if, would you want to be in a room with Kingpin? I wouldn't. Right, that's, no, uh-uh, not yeah, that's, that's that's how it's supposed to be, right? Like that's a villain. I mean, if you're in a room with Kingpin, at some point you're going to die. Yes, exactly. That's like, yeah, yeah, perfect. And like, I love that. I love how I'd be like, oh, I love how he feels like a pro- like that scene where he drives up in his car, walks by the cops, grabs her, and walks off, and the cops did nothing. Said right. so much about how powerful he was. Like the cops, like, nah, uh, uh. Uh, uh-uh, uh, uh-uh. like th- th- whatever's going on here, just leave it alone, you know. And like, I love yeah. that. That that, that and they, he he had to say anything. He didn't have to do anything. He just walked up, grabbed Maya, and walked off. It's like that's power. That is that that is missing simmering power. I mean, I love that. I loved it. It's so smart. So well done. Yeah, yeah. 
So listen, you've watched the whole thing. Just give me one answer to one question. Did we say, did we did we go over your big beef with it? What was the the Daredevil fight scene? Oh, I don't. That's the, oh, only, that's the only thing. It I was too like. short. Too short. It wasn't. Oh my god! And you know what? I don't even think it was choreographed that well. The best scene out of the show is your is your grief with it. Mm-hmm. I don't even think the fight scene was choreographed that well. To be honest with you, the rest of it, all the fight scene, everything it was else, pretty good. Yeah, but there's certain there's a certain kind of style and flair I'm used to seeing with Daredevil. I just and I, it was there, but it, I I wasn't ready for it. I felt maybe I need to watch it again. It felt a little rushed. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Well, he was clearly pulling his punches with her. You think so? I think so. Otherwise, he wouldn't have left. That scene where he hit her, he he hit his big club with her fake leg. That was funny. It was like cling. <laughs> Did you hear that? Mm, mm, yeah, it was funny. It was funny. Oh, in the com- and by the way, guys, in the comics, she does not have a fake leg. It's only in the show. I'm not really well, sure. Well, the actress that. actress is l- missing a leg. Really? Yeah. Do you think that's why they wrote that into the show? I mean, otherwise they'd have to add a leg onto her. But they could have gotten another actress that has a leg. I wonder why they. Well, they got that. this actress. But yeah. I, I understand that. <laughs> but what I'm saying is they made a conscious decision to be like, well, she doesn't have both legs, but that's fine. Well, they, around it. you know, they had, they cast, they did casting. I think they preferred actual deaf actresses. Um, she's actually deaf and she also happens to be missing um, a lower, a lower leg. Hmm. I didn't know. I didn't even know she was really deaf. Yeah, she's really deaf and she's really, uh, I know there's a technical word for that that I don't remember right now. Deaf? No, missing like a lower extremity. Missing a lower extremity, I think. Um, I was kind of, <clears throat> I was kind of not. I live in so I, people know I live in DC. I live, uh, I live close to Gallaudet Deck University, which is a deaf school here uh, in DC. And I walk around my neighborhood, and people sign a lot. Like you go to restaurants and stuff like that, and people will sign. Have you time. learned? I have yourself. No, I haven't learned, but um. I was kind of shocked about how many people knew. My daughter's learning ASL. Oh, cool. Yeah, we teach it at the the college I teach at. We teach ASL. We used to have (laughs) a lot more um, students there, but I think they're going to the value of the schools now. Um, But a lot of people knew how to sign in the show. They um, Apparently, they all took uh, sign language classes, like the whole crew, um, so that they could talk to Alakwa. It's awesome, but like this, yeah. like in the show, a lot of people just this this new as I guess because she knew was was the character Maya was deaf. I well, guess a lot of the Choctaw people knew it because they're family members of hers. Yeah, mm-hmm. that makes sense. Um, Wilson Fisk doesn't know. No, he it. has an interpreter. Yeah, right. I'm curious what's going to happen if Daredevil and Maya have to talk to each other. <laughs> like, how's it going to work? It works. Oh, wait. so they you, do stuff. They do stuff. All right. So listen. So I was going to ask you that: Are we going to see more Daredevil in this? Uh, I was, or was that it? I kind of don't want to spoil that. Just say yes or no. What do you think? I say yes. No, that's it. Well, well, you just said no. That's it. So you said no. No, we don't see it him anymore. That's it. That's it. That's it. Well, you just said they do stuff. Wait, who are you talking? I thought you were talking about Wilson Fisk and Maya Lopez. I'm talking about Daredevil. Oh no, they don't. They don't talk anymore. That 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 was their one scene. Wilson Fisk and Maya Lopez talk to each other later on. Wait, no, I know that. But I was hoping oh, to see. Okay. I was hoping to see more Daredevil. But that's it. Okay, that's right. No, that's it. That's it. Eh, it's disappointing. I it's think you're lying. I, I might be. I got, yeah, you might be. <laughs> I might be. <laughs> All right. Let's start wrapping up here. Um, what do you think of that Biscuits guy? Biscuits? Yeah, it's like her cousin or something. He's, you know, he's got the big it's funny. Beard. I thought it was funny. Yeah. Um, it feel everything about Would you like that to be your name, Biscuits? I love Biscuits, so I wouldn't have a problem. Yeah. Okay. Um, I wouldn't mind making some right now. I just saw um I have I, I'm a big Reddit fan and there's a cast iron skillet Reddit with people who just like put stuff in about cast iron skillets. And you can make biscuits in a cast iron skillet. 
Do you have a cast iron skillet? I have two cast iron skillets. Oh, okay. You, you don't have one? I don't have one. But what are you doing, man? Do you cook food? I've got uh, carbon steel skillets. We just got a set of stainless steel pans for Christmas. Yeah. Which we really like. But they're hard to clean, but that's just how it is. Um, got to use lots of oil. When you're cooking, lots of oil? Right. Okay, that's going to help my cholesterol levels. Um. Anyway, good oils. anyway, you can make biscuits at a cast iron skillet. So I was like, okay. That sounds like something like that. Do it. My wife doesn't like me making biscuits because I have high cholesterol. Mm, do it once a month or once every other month. I, I do my secret food cooking when she's not around. Uh she has to go babysit uh, on Thursday, so I'm just going to make him dinner. Okay. Uh, <laughs> does everyone do that? Does everyone who's married do secret stuff when their spouse is not? <laughs> I don't. You're lying. Mm-mm. You have no secret stuff you do when your wife's not around. No, we're pretty open, I think. Like, you don't have a little stash of candy you keep? I'm, I'm not a big on candy. I'd have a stash of like steaks somewhere. Do you have a stack but, uh, of steaks to work? I, I do not have a stash of steaks. No. That's funny. Uh, okay. Overall, first episode of Echo, really strong. I'm hoping the rest of it's really good. I love the music. I love the acting. I love everything about it. I wish it came out sooner. It's better than Hawkeye, in my opinion. I know you probably go disagree. Yeah, I disagree with that. That's, that's okay. Um, but I like the trajectory of where this is going. Marvel- I like that you like it better than Hawkeye. Yeah, I like it. I like it quite a bit. Um, I'll probably go watch the episode today. Um, but it's just like this is where Marvel and DC are supposed to be using Disney Plus. Marvel and Disney, I'm sorry. Disney Plus should be used for this purpose, not for. And I, I agree. I appreciate Miss Marvel, but I appreciate Moon Knight. I appreciate the shows they've done, but they lean too hard into the superhero stuff, and they didn't lean more into this stuff, which Netflix right. proved. Was extremely popular. I mean, Jessica yeah. Jones, extremely popular. Luke Cage, extremely popular. Iron Fist, not popular, but that's not really their fault. Daredevil, extremely popular. Punisher, extremely popular. They're like, hey, just start digging into those roots, man. Punisher and Daredevil, the casting for those characters was just perfect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely perfect. I agree with him. And you couldn't cast Daredevil better. Yeah. I couldn't imagine anyone else but Charlie Cox playing Daredevil. I wouldn't even want him to. Want him to. Right. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, so, Disney, Marvel, keep doing what you're doing. This will be successful. Just keep trying it. Keep working it. You'll, you'll, be, you'll be surprised. Uh, anything else to wrap up, Mike? Let's give it a grade. Uh, a. Yeah, give it an A. In the show notes, you have a question about the Iron Rings Martial Arts Studio? Uh, not a question. I just noticed that shows up in the background. That's probably just a side note thing. I don't think the Iron Rings or Sean Chi or anything has anything to do with this, so I wouldn't. No, I think it's just a reference to. Uh, yeah, me too. Um, now, well, I'd love to see Sean Chi in this. Hell yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Imagine, um, but I, when I when I look that up, it turns out Iron Rings are a thing in Kung Fu. Hmm. They use they use it for training. Um, so, and the Ten Rings in the Sean Chi movie are. Basically, iron rings that are magical. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. So, yeah. Uh, do, do we know what she trained as? Because that's not that's a qua- uh, taekwondo. What was I mean? Apparently, she trained at that martial arts place in town when she was living there. Um, and then she trained with the um, tracksuit mafia. That's like boxing and mm. probably like mixed martial arts. Yeah. Well, yeah. So you gave it, you gave it an A. I gave it an A. Perfect episode. I'm I'm really curious about um episode two. Can't wait to watch it. Uh, Is there anything you picked up on that we should talk about? No, or, we no? covered everything. Yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing I saw. Uh, the biggest things that I kind of am glad they didn't do, but I'm surprised is some of the David Mack comic book art looking things. They don't really bring those to the forefront much, uh, and that's fine. Uh, I don't, but I kind of wish it was a little bit more of that, but it's okay. Uh, she's just a different kind of superhero kind of action character. She, and she's special. This Echo character is special. And I hope they do some good stuff with her. Yeah. Um, have you seen Reservation Dogs? No. Okay. After you're done watching Echo, I would recommend you start watching Reservation Dogs. 
Is there a term for when people recommend you watch something and you don't want to, and you feel like, "Oh, I don't want to do that." What's the? T- is there a term for that? Do you all you you do that for everything? I think so. <laughs> yeah, you just don't like people recommending stuff to you at all. But so if someone, it doesn't matter how good it's going to be. When someone sends you a link to a YouTube video, you don't feel like, "Oh, I don't feel like watching this." I mean, I just ignore it if I don't want to watch it. Yeah. My wife, my wife and I have the same kind of feeling. We're like, I don't want to do that. Like, I'll have, I'll, I'll have people recommend me stuff, and I, it's good. I just don't feel like this. <laughs> well, it is good. Resurrection Dogs is good. What, okay, um, what, okay, what platform is it on? I don't know. Um, probably Hulu. I don't have a Hulu subscription. Disney is adding Hulu into Disney Plus. I think right when? now. So when? right now, I think. What, so if I have a Disney Plus subscription, I can watch Hulu stuff? Maybe. You know, Disney Plus jacked up their prices. It's 14 bucks now. Everybody jacked up their prices. Like what, like what, hey, listen, corporations, where do you think we're getting this money from? Like, you just keep thinking that right. we just got this money. Like, eventually, you guys are going to realize that we're broke and we're not going to spend money on this crap. Like, I'm about to cancel a lot of subscriptions because it's getting to the point where it's stupid. It's just getting too dumb. This is dumb. Yeah, I hear you. Like, what the, what um, is this? So anyway, look for Reservation Dogs. A lot of the cast from this show Ooh. is in Reservation Dogs. Okay. I I don't watch TV much, but when I do, I will try to watch Reservation Dogs. I promise. Bonnie in this show? Yeah. Devery Jacobs? Mm-mm. This this could be a problem. What's the uh, problem? She, she was the voice for... The Native American character in What If? What's the problem? Well, if they are going to do a live action version of that character, is Devery Jacobs going to play her? Probably. I don't okay. know how they're going to fix that. That's the, yeah. <laughs> that's on the, I don't know what they're going to do. Know. Uh, I, and like, it's way too soon to talk about that. Um, you know. Um, I mean, I assume there is going to be a live action version of that character. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe Devery Jacobs won't play her. Maybe she won't. I don't know. Why well, can't? Well, maybe she will. Maybe they'll figure it out. Yeah. Anyway, let's wrap it up. Um, I got a couple of news you can't use. Are you ready? Ready. This is what actually is a big one for Daredevil: Born Again. The actors that played Foggy, Froggy, and Karen are coming back. That is absolutely massively huge those characters were were perfect for that show uh especially um what's a face um i really like foggy i really like foggy yeah eldon henson is good but deborah ann uh wall is perfect as karen um people should be prepared for karen to be killed in daredevil born again she she was killed in in daredevil a while ago the fact that she's still alive in the shows is kind of surprising to me uh, but I think they kind of like her, so it's actually pretty awesome that that they're um, that she's in the show. Pretty awesome. Your thoughts, Mike? Yeah, I'm glad to see them back. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Really, really glad. Yeah, Deborah Ann Wall just has this weird, menacing, also nice thing about her. So I, it's hard <laughs> to kind of articulate. Uh, also, is um, John Bernthal who played the Punisher. He yeah. is quoted as saying, he says here, um, I think that's the reason why that character has resonated as deeply and strongly as he has. In the hearts and minds of comic book fans and first responders and people in the military and people all over the globe, I think there's a little bit of Frank Castle in everybody. Uh, I don't know about that. He <laughs> exists very strongly inside of me, and I care about the character deeply. I also know that it's absolutely essential that if we do do it, we do it right. We have a real sacred integrity to the source material and to what is at the core of Frank. I'm going to do my absolute best to make sure that if and when we do it, we do it right. They're going to make, they're doing that. I mean, that's not even in question. Got, re, got they're, to. They're rebooting the Punisher. That's like, right. that's done. John Barthel wants to do it. And yeah, done. This is a question of when they're going to do it. That's just, a, that's a dumb. He's so good. He's so good. I didn't watch, how many seasons did Punisher have too? I believe so. Did yeah. you watch both of them? Yeah, of course. I didn't watch them. How were they? Excellent. Were they good? Yeah. 
I might go back and watch. He's good in everything he's ever in. That's true. He is. Like, he played a, a, a racist cop in a show, and I love him. Mm. You know? No, he's great. He's good. He's good. I might go back and watch The Punisher. He's like uh, out of actors alive right now. Charisma. Um, I would say maybe John Bernthal has even more charisma than Jonathan Majors has. Mm, mm, mm. Um, and John Bernthal is less of a problematic person. So, mm. well, we all know everybody has secrets, brother. Yeah. Uh, also, this is kind of a side note, and I don't really care about it, but here it is. Uh, Wonder Man has started filming again, so Wonder Man <clears throat> is back on the schedule. I just can't believe that they, out of everybody, they picked Wonder Man as a character to do a show around. I'm not surprised, but can, people aren't pe- people aren't going to like. I don't know what to think about Wonder Man. He's a very old comic character. He has long roots, but no one cares about him. Not even in the comic book world. So it's like, yeah. what are we doing here? Uh, uh, unless they have, they must have an amazing script because Wonder Man is a is a deep dig, and I, I, it's fine. It is what it is, but. I don't know. So he's older than Wonder Woman, right? As far as the character, no. Wonder Woman is way older than him. <clears throat> really? Yeah. Why did they bother? I don't know, man. I don't know. These I thought decisions, he was older. These decisions were made before I was even thought to be born. Before my mother right. was born. You know, right. like, <laughs> these are old characters. Um, yeah. It is. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It's just, it's just a weird little Wonder Man is a superhero character who's an actor in Hollywood. Like, it's just an odd thing. It's like, what? This is. Why are we doing this? Right. But I, I, I'm not looking forward to it, and I and I look forward to this stuff. Um, Mike, what are we doing in the next episode? We're we're rewatching Echo. No, I, 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 I yeah, you're rewatching it. I'm watching Echo. Episode two, our schedule's a little weird because Mike was sick, but we're going to get back on track. Uh, so yeah. it, the episode two is going to come out sooner than episode one did. So keep an eye on that. <clears throat> if you watch, yeah, if you it should, should be coming this Thursday. Yeah. So if you're listening with us, don't skip ahead too far. Watch a couple episodes. We'll be back on Thursday. Um, Mike, how can people uh, find our show or share this with their friends and family so they can keep up with what we're doing? Uh, just uh, hit your search box and type in Super Side Show. You'll probably find us that way. Also, hit the share button. Share this with your friends. Um, anybody you know that likes comics or television. Yeah, after Echo, we're going to make some decisions about what we're going to do next. You know, I, you know what? We never saw the Punisher together. Maybe we can do Punisher or, the, or Daredevil. Oh, maybe. maybe we can do. Maybe we can maybe. go. Yeah, we never did that. I mean, we never did any of the Netflix shows. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Why did I even say that? That's a lot, though. That's a lot. <laughs> I don't know if I want to commit to that. Well, I don't know. You know I, That's I, a I, lot. I will commit to it right now. I will commit. I will commit all to of, some of them. No, I'm not going to rewatch. <laughs> the, uh, I don't want to watch all of them. I, Iron Fist. I didn't watch season two of it. Um, oh, I didn't even finish season one of it. <laughs> so, uh, really? Okay. It might be okay. I don't know. I actually watched all of the Netflix stuff. Wow! Did you? Yeah. Where do you find the time? In the weekends, weeknights. I feel like my playing, times. I feel like my time is <clears> when always, you're playing Destiny. Yeah, I guess so. But even when I'm not playing video games, I feel like I have something to do all the time. Yeah. Oh, like, and that's my biggest problem. I always feel like I have something to do. I have never sitting around and be like, I'm bored. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. That's something to do with me. That's my problem. Anyway. Uh we'll see you guys next week.